the mayor's office. Unless you have an appointment, you can't go up there. We need to call him then, because I've been trying for a month to get an appointment. Well, I, ain't, I don't need to do anything. An office of small business affairs. Wow, this is a place that perhaps yeah. can help you. Yes. So do you think you had a right to go up to that floor? I know I have a right to go up to that floor. Yeah, I was just passing by on a small business and I wanted to see what type of resources you guys have. Okay, can I make it? Okay, you're under know arrest. Under arrest? Yes, you're under arrest. For what? Arrest. For what? We'll let you know. You're under arrest. Yeah, we'll let you know. I've been told that you were not supposed to be here. I am supposed to be here. The security guard stood at the top of an escalator, blocking you from yeah, getting you off, and almost causing you to fall look at you, and get severely you injured. Away. And the cops were called on Don't you. If there was ever a moment that revealed true stupidity, this low-quality employee just moves the nonsense sign anywhere he wants, proving how illegitimate it is. The mobster mayor cannot let go of COVID restrictions and signs like most authoritarian-minded people. Excuse me, ma'am, I just need some questions answered. Grimy, man, grimy. And he comes out, goes right back in when he sees me. Hey, sir, how are you? I'm good, how's it going, man? Uh, well, I'd be a lot better if you left. Okay. Right. Everybody's asking you to leave. We need you to leave. What's this, the reason? It's becoming an ongoing thing. Right now, you're trespassing because you were actually leaving. No. You're not, you're, this is a public building. I haven't broken a law. It's not trespassing in a public building. Okay, we're, we're not going to do this. We are. Okay. All right, all right. Listen, you don't want to abide by the listen, law. Listen, you're not going to be here causing a scene, though. I'm not causing yes, a scene. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You got called I'm... here for a reason, sir. What's the reason? Causing a disturbance. What's the disturbance? Please. What's the disturbance? I'm not going to argue semantics, but... It's not semantics. They're constitutional rights. Okay. Uh, that's what they are. So he's not willing to talk to me then. Well, not if you report. Uh, what's he have to hide? He doesn't want anyone to know what we're talking about and, 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 and what he's going to say. It's not okay. Probably not going to get an appointment by doing this. I, I didn't get an appointment by not doing this. You don't need an appointment to come up here. Okay? I agree. I agree. Okay? The mayor is an ex-con who did seven years for racketeering and gets elected mayor again after he gets out of federal prison. Yeah, go figure. And so, out of desperation, he contacted Leroy Truth Investigations. Welcome, everyone. I am Leroy Truth for Leroy Truth Investigations. And I have with me Mr. Joe Burns, who hails from the Bridgeport, Connecticut area, and he's the owner of PB's Deli and Convenience. And welcome, first of all, Joe. Thanks for having me, Leroy. Oh, my pleasure. And the reason we're talking is you reached out to me. You have watched several of my videos on my YouTube channel, Leroy Truth Investigations. And you've had some things going on in your town, including what, what actually precipitated you reaching out to me. Yeah, well, uh, I opened a new business just over a year ago. A customer threatened to blow my store up. And, and by the way, this is a customer, as you share with me, that you extended credit to, because you extended yes. credit to a number of people in your community, because some people are going through hard times, yeah. and you very generously offered to extend credit. Yes. So things are tough, you know, they, you can buy a few items, in a week or two they pay up. Correct. And you're gonna hear more about the story when I do the interview, the formal interview with Joe. However, why did you end up here contacting me? Well, lots, a lot has happened. I've been trying to get help. I went through internal affairs. I uh, contacted the chief of police. Oh, let's back, back uh, up one step. You were asking for help, but you had the worst thing that could possibly happen to you while you were asking for help, which is you got arrested. I did end up getting arrested by just going to the mayor's office and trying so, to so get So you went appointment. to the mayor's home or you went to the police chief's home? No. You were arrested, what was the charge? Uh, it's criminal trespassing in the government center where the mayor's office is. All right, so, uh, so I can wrap my head around this. So you didn't actually go to their homes, you know, which you no. did not, no. because that could be maybe criminal trespass in private property. Sure. It, it would be. But you were arrested in a government building. Yes. But you were the troublemaker in their minds because you were trying to get the police and the mayor and the mayor's office to do their jobs. Yeah, ultimately that, that's what it was. And where else did he have to turn to? 
the police won't protect him. The mayor's office and the mayor's people won't protect him. There's a whole bunch of corruption that apparently is going on there. The mayor is an ex-con who did seven years for racketeering and gets elected mayor again after he gets out of federal prison. Yeah, go figure. And so, out of desperation, he contacted Leroy Truth Investigations. And so, stay tuned and watch the whole interview. And there's lots of layers to this. Because Bridgeport actually is a very nice city, other than the government and the police. And, but check him, check him out. You just started the store when? Just over a year ago. Yeah, and he's working hard. And the police and the government, the mayor's office, will not support him. In fact, they are hurting him. They have taken away his freedom. They're trying to take away more of his freedom and more of his hard-earned money with this, these trumped-up charges of trespassing in a public building in publicly accessible places. And you're going to see actual footage that he took in his numerous times of trying to get support and justice when someone threatened to blow up his building, his store, and this is a family-owned business. And who are the employees? His family. This is Scalzo Photo. I started editing this video for Leroy Truth thinking this was a standard story about one man being treated poorly due to miscommunications and honest mistakes. I realized quickly there is more to the story that explains the bizarre behavior of staff in this video. I came across articles about Bridgeport's interest in hiring dishonest convicted felons into management roles. In what other line of work can you steal from your boss, lie to your boss, go to prison for crimes like extortion, tax evasion, mail fraud, racketeering, and get hired again at the same company? It would never happen in the private sector. Corrupt felons are welcome in Bridgeport, Connecticut, especially if you stole tax money in the past. One of the felons that mobster Mayor Ganim hired is former Newtown Police Sergeant Dominic Costello, who was convicted for stealing money while he was part of the police union. I then read an article that the police union supported the felon mobster mayor when he was the candidate for the politically dominant Democratic Party after he was released from his cage for extortion, bribery, tax evasion, mail fraud, and racketeering. Those are mobster charges. Thus, the term mobster mayor was born. My suspicion is that people like former Newtown Sergeant Dominic Costello were hired in Bridgeport because of their criminal instincts, not in spite of them. This explains the Bridgeport government's hatred for citizen-involved democracy, hatred of cameras and press activity around the mayor and staff. Criminals hate cameras. Even the city attorney's office is accused of breaking FOIA laws left and right, according to this and other articles. This story and video is a slow build. You will notice a lot of quick editing for time management, but I believe I kept all interactions in context. Side note, it has come to my attention that Sergeant Neary is a tool of the mobster mayor. He allegedly ordered his goon Vickens to remove Joe, no questions asked, which is the opposite of what high-quality officers do. You see, a conformist is someone who will do whatever they are told, regardless of what is right. And a moralist will do whatever is right, regardless of what they are told. And obviously, Vickens is a conformist, as most police officers are. Authoritarians like Sergeant Neary helped create the secretive environment Mayor Ganim used to commit his crimes, which sent him to federal prison for seven years. This mayor and the police need to be watched and held accountable at all times. Start at the beginning. You own yeah. this deli. So to sum it up, I'm, I'm a new business owner. Uh, we've been open just over a year now. So, so back in November, um, I, I do and I, I, I do care about the community and I was nice enough to extend tabs or credit to uh, different customers. And, Can you pause there for a minute? Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, who does that in this day and age? That's something we used to see back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. And there was a local business owner who would extend credit on trust to local people and it would help them out. And so you decided to do that as well which says a lot about you and people for the most part, they would honor the trust that you gave them and they would pay you back. Yeah. I had called nine one one and I told them a customer threatened to blow my store up. That was the call. How are you doing? You're Joe? Yeah. What's, what's going on? I called. I called her left 
left messages. No response. That was for her to catch up on the bill? Yeah, yeah, no response. Now she's got all the time in the world to come in here and threaten to blow my place up. She's got no time to call me back. And that's when you charged the card? I charged the card on the 4th. I called on the 1st, the 2nd, the 3rd. No and response. no answer? No, I left voicemails. But did she, she didn't give you permission, though, to charge she the card? She gave me permission to charge the card. How would I have the PIN number? So if you want to do some cash, that's fine. I said this is more of like a, a civil thing, too, yeah, anyways. It really is, yeah. Um, it's not. But the blowing the building up is not civil, right? No. I just want that documented. I'm not looking to jam her up or ch get charges they'll file against her. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell her not to come back. All right, thank you, guys. Yeah. So you're not out here for the call I put out? Both of you. Okay. Her, you just her came card in here. here, made a huge scene, threatened to blow my place up. You, you didn't told me ask that. me anything. You about told me that. that. You told me that. You didn't ask me about the conversation. You just asked about the card. The card. Okay. The card. And you told me that she. Any details of that conversation? Sure, tell me. You know what? I'll, I'll go down to the station and, and file another report above and beyond that because I'm not. Sir, I'm whatever you want here. reported, now now is the time to report it. You don't want to give me any of your info. I don't it's know why you're bullshit. talking to me like this. Like I, I'm here to help. I was just threatening to blow my business up. I heard that, sir. I heard that. You I know? said I'm going to document it. I'm going to go tell her she's not allowed back. As far as all this other, what she owed or didn't owe and the card run, that's, that's more of a civil thing going on. Okay? I'm going to tell her not to come back. Anything else? No, I won't. She'll confirm the tab number as well. Her, her tab amount? Uh-huh. 290-something, I think. Okay. What I didn't realize when it was Officer Michael Cavalier who came, what I didn't realize when he came into the store, the customer had called the police on me as well, and he had already been to her house. He never spoke to her about making the threat at all. I got the body camera footage. It took me four months to get it. But I got the body camera footage. Uh, some of it's muted, and then it just cuts off. But what they gave me, he doesn't speak to her about the threat at all. Pause Not for a all. minute. And this is something, ladies and gentlemen, why it is so critically important to record the police whenever you see interaction. Because they, in collusion, and to protect themselves, they are muting the body cameras constantly. Yeah. And so we don't hear a lot that's going on. So yeah. this happened to you, Joe. Yeah, I wish I had my recorder running and my camera running at that time. Um, I know now. Right. We all learn. I've been there as well. I, I said, <laughs> damn, why didn't I record them when I was yeah. early in this? Yeah. But that's a whole other story. And I'm going to be pressing the police about getting the unmuted, unredacted body cam for you. Yeah, I, I would love that. So I call the Bridgeport Police Station, speak to Officer Cavalier and say, hey, I saw the report. Why is my home address in there, and why is nothing mentioned about the threat? Did you speak to her about it? He said, well, I did speak with her about it. How come it's not in the report? You need to change this. And he gave me attitude about changing it. And I said, so how, how is my home address in there? How did you get this information, my birthday and home address? And he said, it auto-populates. Every cop I talked to at the station, I said, how does this happen? Who do I talk to about this? And they all said, you have to talk to Sergeant Rodriguez. He signed off on the report. So I would call him and he went, he had dispatch call me back to tell me that he's not going to call me. I've, I've never heard of this. He said, dispatch calls me, said, he's not going to call you. He said to contact internal affairs. I said, this isn't about the complaints I put in. This is about the report. He has to do his job and call me. He eventually calls me and has backs his officer blindly without seeing the body camera footage, without anything. Backs his officer and what specifically? And he did nothing wrong. He did his job. He spoke to her. Sir, you haven't seen any of the footage. If he spoke to her, that's great. I, I hope he did. It, why isn't it in the report? It's not in the report that you signed off on. So right. he eventually had... Officer Cavalier go back about a week or 10 days later. I'd have to go back and check my notes uh, and speak to her about the threat. So there is a report about that 
after the fact. Um, about two or three weeks later, there's a fire in my side parking lot where, where I am right now, actually. A few months later, my car window gets busted out at my home. It's a coincidence. Could be. But would I be thinking it's related if my home address was never put in that report? Absolutely not. I contacted the mayor. Oh, well, pause here a minute. How he came to connect with me is because he has been failed by everyone who us, we the people, the taxpayers, pay to actually protect and serve us and do investigations. And so out of desperation, he has reached out to me, yeah. and he should have never been in this desperate position. That's what the system is there for, but it has failed him miserably. Yeah. And so, you know, we all have a right to redress our government, Bridgeport Police Department, Bridgeport Mayor's Office. Yeah. Now, this takes us to the videos, and I'm going to share a, a brief timeline, everyone, so you, you can get caught up. January 14th, met with 1A, our internal affairs, and gave statements. 125, called city attorney to get update on body cam FOIA. And I called, this is Joe's words, trying to get updates weekly with no response. Finally was told they are short staff. Sorry, doing the best they can, serving and protecting you not. That's so would, Yeah, I can imagine how frustrating this is, Joe. And then Joe continued to call to try and get updates and was even hung up on. He's just a bit, local business owner who tried to help his community. And the police are, are ignoring him and the support staff. He was even hung up on. He then wanted to speak with the city attorney about this. You're escalating because you got to. I'm People trying to do it right and go through the proper, the proper channels, right? One step at a time. And so you wanted to speak with the city attorney about this and place a complaint. But the city attorney refused to call you back. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not livid, you have no blood running through your veins. You are literally one of those walking dead zombies. And this is this is insane. March 7th, finally received body cam footage, but in the transparency that government likes to do, was muted a lot. Here and told you just report. You don't want to give me any of your info. And seemed to be cut short, edited, redacted. So Joe emailed the city attorney asking if they did this or the officer did this. I still have FOIAs out that are four months old, haven't received them yet. Yeah, absolutely unacceptable. And you also complained about the unprofessional actions of his staff. Yeah. He said that they didn't mute or cut anything out, so it must have been the officer. Red flag. What's the accountability? What are the consequences there, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. We're getting closer here to now. March 17th, the road that Joe's business was on was closed down with no notification to him in order to do something with gas lines. Then, March 17th, Joe emailed the mayor's office to ask if this is standard protocol. He lost close to $1,500 over three days and wanted to know how to file a complaint on the city attorney. March 20th, Veronica responds saying, I need to get counsel. <laughs> and then, March 20th, puts in a complaint on Sergeant Carly. City attorney told me to call him about body cam for his questions. I left several messages he writes with no call back. Now, Dan, who is the mayor's chief of staff, called him to talk to him about his issues and said he would look into them. Never called back. All this. He's trying to get some form of support. Then in April, Sergeant Lazaro told him that he is waiting for transcripts to come back to finish things up. And Joe, you just need to be patient. He then says that he didn't think this warranted an investigation or a complaint. <laughs> Why, what do you say about that? <laughs> I lost my mind, and I, I told Sergeant Lazaro that I was not ha happy. I said, just let's start the appeal process right now. You're obviously not going to find any wrongdoing with that comment. How do you say that, uh, someone who's investigating this, that they didn't think it warranted an investigation? Are they going to do their due diligence and investigate properly? And I do support police investigators, absolutely, if they do the the job correctly. I know police officers in other cities personally who are really great guys. Yes. Yep. And some of them are, I mean, amazing geniuses. We see these CSI shows and all, all yeah. over the place. There are not nearly that many in real life, it seems, but there are police officers who are incredible yeah. investigators after the fact that can bring justice to people who are victimized, not in Bridgeport, Connecticut, obviously. So we, yeah. they, they, they need to clean house from my perspective. Clean oh, house. Yeah. We need new people, good people who are going to do their freaking jobs 
And then bringing the time frame up here is that you visit the mayor's office. They try to kick you out of the building on April 24th. The mayor's office. Where's that? Unless you have an appointment, you can't go up there. Well, we need to call him then, because I've been trying for a month to get an appointment. Well, I ain't, I don't need to do anything. Not the way you just came out. You, yeah. you, you know, so you need to call him, set up an appointment. That's all. Okay. 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 You're an asshole. All right, You're an you asshole. Much. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah, fuck you. You have a good day. Now, some of you might be thinking, calling someone a word like asshole saying fuck you is uncalled for wrong if you get called an asshole by somebody that is information for you if someone calls me an asshole i assume i did something to cause it you should too i'm not seeing the door i'm calling the mayor's office i'm not leaving now i'm not leaving now yeah you can't kick me out for being rude dude yeah this is here. You gotta go. I'm not going anywhere. Go. Now I'm documenting my, my, my visit. What's in here? They refuse to call me back. They refuse to. Step outside, please. No. Please, step outside. Call. Call, call. Right. That's where I am. Yeah, call Lazaro out here. Because I got some words for him, too. Okay. Okay, I'm not leaving. Well, just, just step out. I'm yeah, not. You got to at least the front desk. I can't stop you from leaving, but you got to go to the front desk, at least past the front desk. For what? This is a public building, right? Public lobby. Yes. It, not building. Right here. Lobby. Visitor pass required beyond this point. It's beyond this point. I'll do you a favor. Here. I'm gonna, as long as I get all that on here. You can't do that. You can't just do that. If there was ever a moment that revealed true stupidity, this low-quality employee just moves the nonsense sign anywhere he wants, proving how illegitimate it is. The mobster mayor cannot let go of COVID restrictions and signs like most authoritarian-minded people. And, and what's your name? Ruiz? Yeah, it's okay. Good you should have recorded what you were saying to me. Right? Oh, it, it's all on here. Okay. It's all on here. Good. All I said is we need to call him then. And then, and then, no, I, I said, I asked you if you right? had an appointment, right? And you said no. I said no. You need to call him. I said, no, I didn't. That's what you said. I said, we need to call and him then. Said, then you call me and names, then, right? After so, you, after you so try now, to kick me out of here, right? No, 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 no. I didn't kick you out. I, I started kicking you out after you started calling me names because there's no reason to call names. So now you're making a disturbance inside the lobby. Nobody's so making a disturbance. You to leave. Nobody's making a disturbance. Okay. We're just documenting now. Okay. okay. Documented. Yep. Documented. That's Tensions fine. are resolved after both men communicate more effectively. This entire story is about how the mobster mayor refuses to communicate effectively, forcing Joe to use the limited tools that he has. As always, the mobster mayor and police will abandon communication and resort to violence, abduction, and extortion in court instead of having a conversation with Joe or even listening. They run away and hide. And you can't just move a sign where people can and can't go past. That, 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 that. What's your name? Felipe. Felipe. And what's your position here? Felipe. What's your position here? <sighs> Unbelievable. After tensions were resolved between the two men, Felipe insists on ratcheting tensions back up. Who is this guy? He won't reveal his position with the city, but will take your money for his paycheck. Let's get that badge there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't give two shits either, dude. How about no? How about that? Cops are coming to get you out right now, buddy. Uh, okay, whatever, man. Whatever. Nothing's going on. I've been trying for a month to get an appointment with the mayor. Nobody calls me back. They hang up on me. Nobody returns my email, so I came here. I said, where's the mayor's office located? He said, do you have an appointment? I said, no. He said, you need to call make an appointment. I said, well, we need to call then. And then he cops an attitude, tries to kick me out. I don't need to take that shit, okay? I'm here on official business, okay? I haven't done anything. This guy wants to move the sign from there to there. Like, that makes a difference. I have it on video. The sign is there. You can't go beyond that point. Not that point. This point. That sign has been over here for months and months, dude. Congratulations. Congratulations. Sure. 
You've been trying to get an appointment with the mayor. Yeah. What's in it, it, uh, it, it concerns the mayor. Okay, and no one from the mayor's office has gotten back to you? No. I, I've spoken with Veronica, Rebecca, Dan. Okay. Nobody calls me back. Nobody okay. emails so me back. They haven't gotten back to you, said an I've, I've emailed. I've left messages. I've spoken very briefly. They end up hanging up on me and never returning my calls. Okay. This has to stop. My name's Joe Burns. Okay. Yeah. Right. Let me see if anybody's in the office. Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm okay right here. Thank you. Yeah, Joe Burns. Yep. Yeah. You, you can check. It, it's all good, man. You don't got to worry about me. Yep. It's ridiculous, the service that, that this city gives absolutely ridiculous from ia to the police department to the mayor's office absolutely ridiculous need an appointment to get back in here too no and yes i'm saying do you need do you need an appointment to go back there as well as my answer. do you need an appointment to go back there yes oh, thank thank you so yes or no answer, man. So this is a public lobby, not a public building. That makes no sense. Well, that's shape. I haven't spoke to her since uh, March 20th. Okay, so she said that she communicated to you that... Um, nope. Is how to what? You wanted to sue a city. No, attorney. that's incorrect. So she says she, she can't get you a meeting with the mayor. He'll only meet people on certain certain reasons. Um, and so I have a to, lot of reasons. So I guess he's not willing to meet with you, and there's nothing further that she can do for you. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, the employee on your screen did an excellent job of listening and communicating, only for it to be ruined by the felon, criminal, mobster mayor and his incompetent staff. The mayor and staff used cameras to get elected, but runs from them when in office. That is what criminals do. And he's literally a criminal, seven years in prison for extortion, stealing tax money, bribery, racketeering, mobster stuff. There is. I need to know the complaint process to file complaints on not only the city attorney, but Veronica and Rebecca in their office, okay? And then I need to speak with the mayor about the police department, the city attorney's office, Everything that's been happened to me and my business since I've opened, okay, that is mayor's business. Okay, well, she said he's not willing to meet with you, so there's really nothing further that Veronica or Lucy can do. You guys are impeding my complaint process, which is illegal. I need complaints filed. Okay. How, how does that happen? That we've taken your complaints as far as I am. On the city attorney and the two staff members in the mayor's office, how does that happen? How does that get done? That's through the mayor's office, and he's not willing to speak with you. So you can't yeah, do that. I, I have the right to redress my government. Okay. Well, there's nothing All right. that IA can help you with here today. I'm not here to see IA. I'm here to see the mayors, the, well, someone in the mayor's office. Unfortunately, he's not going to meet with you today, so I can't do well, anything else for Then you. someone but needs to get down here and make an appointment. All right. Well, Veronica said she can't make an appointment with Veronica you. Veronica is a, 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 a she, she, she's just not all there. Sue? Sue? The city attorney, it's it's that's never that's been talked about. It's never been talked about. She's incorrect. I've explained all this. I've sent emails. So, so what he's going to do is uh, he's going to get the number through labor labor relations. What is labor relations? They take, they take the complaint process for any employees in the city of Bridgeport when it's related to civilians. Okay, so why was I told to contact the mayor's office? to I'm put in a I'm complaint sure. on the city attorney. I'm not sure who told me that. But city they're, Hall. They're city employees, so labor usually oversees all civilians. So you can call them if you want to file a complaint on. Any now action. I want to file a complaint on the mayor too now. Okay. How do I do that? Well, same, go, same people? Go, go talk to the labor relations and okay. they'll guide you from there. You guys have not heard the last of me. And you need to train this guy. You can't kick somebody out of, of a building, yeah, <laughs> of a building. Okay, a public, public building. Who, who was I disturbing? Who was I disturbing? Who, who was I disturbing? Unfortunately, the communication has devolved into two men immaturely bickering back and forth. This all could have been avoided 
months ago with a three-minute conversation or less with the mayor's staff or anyone who cared. If labor's relations who I have to talk to, this could have been done a month ago. A month. Is Lazaro in today? Uh, I may have seen him today, yes. I'm not sure if he's here at this exact moment, but he was, he was here this morning. IA2, 90 days? 90 days. I'm past 90 days on, on my complaints here. It's absolutely yeah, ridiculous. It's tough because uh, we're very short in there. So yeah, it's, it's all past it. How many times have you guys called these transcript people to see what's going on? That's what I want to ask Lazaro. You're waiting on transcripts? Apparently. Apparently. So labor relations is going to handle that type of complaint. Okay. This is the attorney for labor relations. When you get a chance, call him and make an appointment. File a complaint. I've emailed this person once before too. No response. Well, we can't pull everybody out of our hat today, right? Because those are the people that are going to take this complaint. When I went to City Hall, they gave me this email address for Skyers and um, and the, the mayor's email address. Right. I mean, what what's going on with this city? It's 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 a disgrace. I'm so upset. I opened a business here. I'm so upset, man. I got I, all I've done was have my life threatened because of your police officers. The mayor doesn't give a shit. Okay, he doesn't give a shit. It's unbelievable, man. Well, I'll be back tomorrow if I don't get anything here. So, yeah. So you've heard it there. The mayor is not willing to see me. He doesn't think my business is important enough. You got a dipshit, ignorant security guard here who thinks he can kick me out of the building. You got another dipshit uh, security. I don't even know if he's security. Thinks he can move a sign from there to there. And, and that's supposed to be okay to keep me behind that sign. Oh, I don't know why it's back here. It's always up front. I've been in this building multiple times. That sign is never, never up front. It's always by the escalator. It's absolutely ridiculous. April 24th, internal investigation, May 15th, finds no wrong doing. We investigated ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and we got an A-plus on our paper. And Joe was appealing that and is going to meet with the citizen board and then bringing up to date here, you visited the mayor's office again, May 22nd. The security guard stood at the top of an escalator, blocking you from getting off and almost causing you to fall and get severely injured. And the cops were called on you. Yes. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm all good today. Thank hey, where you. Where you going? I'm going upstairs to see Roger. the mayor's office. She's talking about me. Nah. I can't come up here. There's nothing preventing me from coming up here. Look, the mayor doesn't want to respond to my emails or phone calls, so I gotta come up here and, and see why. It's a public building, man. I, know, I got all the right to be up here. You come can't on, impede my movement. Come man. on, man. Come you on, can't man. impede my movement. Look at you, man. Come Get on, the man. fuck out of the way. Hold up. Don't cuss at me either, man. Don't well, cuss at me. Don't you block sure? me. Don't, sure don't, don't me. block me. Don't sure cuss at me. Okay? You can't do that. Number one, I can't stand when adults pretend to be offended by cuss words, as they say. Number two, as this low-quality employee pretends to be offended by cuss words, he almost causes a man to fall down an escalator. That is worse than words. That's fine. I'll knock on the door, yeah? That's the city attorney's office. Planning. Office of the mayor. Here we go. I need to see the mayor, please. You see, they're in there. Refusing to come to the door.
ignore me in person too. Excuse me, ma'am, I just need some questions answered. There's nothing stopping me from being upstairs. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Okay, we'll just wait for her to come back. This is the dude right here who tried to impede my movement. Almost made me fall down the escalator. What's up, guys? What's going on? Uh, just trying to uh, figure out why the mayor's not returning my calls or emails. That's all. Okay. Who are you? Sergeant Pereira. Pereira? Nice yes. to meet you. Nice to meet you. And yourself? What's up, Sergeant Robinson? How nice are to you? meet you. I'm okay. It'd be better if, uh, if you get in touch with the mayor. He seemed to be scurrying behind closed doors, so. Well, I'll just... they'll open unless you have an appointment. Well, he won't uh, respond to my emails or phone calls to make the appointment, so. I believe that you spoke to Veronica. She's been emailing you back and forth? No, no, no. Yeah. I haven't received. Don't, don't yes if you yeah, don't know. You saw the emails. You saw, when, when was the last email? Uh, a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago? Here. Last time you came here, remember? Yeah. We yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So and since then? you back. She emailed me nonsense, okay. so proving she, my point that she doesn't know what the hell she's doing. But she communicated with you. No, she didn't. There you go. How are you? Hey, everybody. You, uh, What's going on? No, there no, we no, go. No, 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 no. What do you mean, no, no? It's, no, it's, a, it's a public I'm, office. No, no. Hey, not. how are you? This is a locked building. Okay. It was locked. It was locked. Okay. It, was, it, was, it was open. Let yourself, you in. let yourself in. Oh, this guy needs to take an appointment with, with, with the people here. Okay, well... So I'll just hang out here till the building closes. That's fine with me. This it's fine with me. Area. It's not a private area. It's a public building. Listen to me. It's a public building. Yeah. This is a private office. Upstairs. There's, there's nothing point. restricting me from coming up here. There's nothing restricting me from coming up here. Sign downstairs says photo ID or visitor pass required. I have a photo ID. And an appointment. No. It just says photo ID or visitor right. pass you are, required. You because you need an appointment. Well, I'm here now, so I'll just hang out. It's not restricted. I got up here. Obviously, it's not restricted. Well, I don't know if the security guard was downstairs. It doesn't matter out. if the security guard was downstairs. There's nothing restricting me from coming up. And that other security guard, someone needs to tell him he can't impede my movement. I almost fell down that escalator because he wouldn't get out of the way at the very top. I'll be talking to someone about that, too. You can see there's pamphlets over here on this little table. It's for the public. I'm the public. Typical city of Bridgeport for you, right? Everyone who's in a, a, a government position doesn't want to help you, doesn't want to respond to you. Take it to the streets then. I'll be protesting out front here very soon as well. What is it that you want to ask? Well, not right now I want to know why he won't take a meeting with me. Because what I was told last time I was here is unacceptable, okay? He runs the city. I have a lot of issues with the city from the police department to the to the city attorney's office, to people in his office hanging up on me. It's not okay. Not at all. all right. And he doesn't want to, that's not his job? That's My taxes help pay for this building. I got all the right to be in it. Just asking for a little bit of accountability. It's tough to come by here in the city of Bridgeport. Yeah. Issues Concerns about. and issues I have going on with the city. Okay. That falls right under his his job. If we can make that happen. Yeah, I, that's what I want. Make it happen. Okay. That's what I want. Yeah. 
That's what I've been wanting for months now. It's over stuff going on in the city. I own a business. That's where it all started. You know? I got... I appreciate that. Grimy, man. Grimy. And he comes out. Goes right back in when he sees me. I don't know that he knows this. as He probably knows now. But I've never met the guy. I don't think he's ever met you. He's probably uh, thinking about... It's kind of odd for a mayor, a mayor's office, not to respond to a constituent's emails for well over a week. I agree. I'm surprised someone didn't reach out to you with some kind of email. Yeah. I don't know that the mayor would personally reach out to you, but he has a lot of people to work with. Yeah, and, and, and they all are worthless. I spoke to Dan something. He's a, a chief of staff or something. Um, there's the Veronica who doesn't understand the difference between a complaint and a lawsuit, but yet she's working in here. There's, uh, I believe, um, Rebecca, who likes to hang up on people. It's not very professional for someone working in this capacity, huh? I'm looking to air my grievances with my government. So what? He, he doesn't respond. What's your name, sir? My name's Joe. Joe? Joe, yeah. Okay. I'll give you my last name. Everyone knows. As a matter of fact, the police department gives it to whoever they want. Just gives it to whoever they I'm want. So they can come to my house and bust out car windows. That's what the police do with my name and, and, and address. So what, that's one of the issues we need to speak about. What actions have you taken to far as trying to get the, the... Every possible action I can. I've phoned. I've emailed. I've um, been downstairs request for someone to come down to meet with me. I was told the mayor refuses to meet with me because my issues don't fall under what he does. He runs the freaking city. All of my issues fall under what he does. What are some of your issues? Well, well that issue number one, crooked ass cop Michael Cavalier gave my home address out to someone who threatened to blow my business up. Months later, my car window was busted out. It's not okay, man. It's not okay. City attorney's office refuses to do their job. Okay. I, his staff members hang up on me. That's, an inter that's internal here. That's 100% his responsibility. You don't treat members of the public like that hanging up on people. He needs to get his house in order. So we need to discuss this stuff. And I'm not going to stop coming until we, we talk. I'm not sure. Yes. Okay. Who would you speak with? Chief of staff. Dan? Yeah. Okay. If you want, he could come out and conference him. We could speak to you. Yeah, sure. Uh, but no recording. That's not going to happen. Everything needs to be documented. The way I've been treated, I need this is for my safety. We get everything on the record. If he doesn't want it being recorded, I don't want to talk to him. There it is. The mobster mayor and staff member Dan use cameras to get elected. But when in office, they run and hide, operate in secret, run from cameras. With cameras, the public will hear and see what you have to say. And when you're a criminal, like this mobster mayor, they want to operate in secret. And a small business owner, like Joe, does not have enough money to offer this mayor. I tried. Yeah. I tried to. What does that tell you? He doesn't want to be recorded. He's covering his ass. He, he, want, he wants to cover up. Nah, I'm not interested. Not interested. This is what the mayor's staff does. They don't want to go on the record. Everything's off the record with them. It's unacceptable, man. Mr. Mayor! What's that say about your mayor? And there's a sign at the bottom of those stairs saying photo ID or visitor pass required. Where's your pass? I have it by photo ID. You don't have a pass? No, I don't have a pass. They wouldn't give me a pass to come up here. I got a photo ID, though. So you kind of took it upon yourself. Sure did. To come to pass. Right there. But that's the reason. Why is an appointment necessary? People are busy, Mr. Burns. It's the public's building. It's the public's building. It's, it's all of our building. This is a private area. It's not. There There's private. nothing restricting the public from coming up here. Okay. There's nothing at all. And if that's your understanding. That's my understanding. We, we can ask the city attorney if you like. Yeah. Okay. You know? But. I'm not going to argue semantics. But... It's not semantics. They're constitutional rights. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's what they are. Listen, I don't have a lot of time for me to come down here. I know you're running a 
you know, I mean, it, it's important. Yeah, it seems very important. You got to sign in. Did you sign in today? No, I, I haven't signed in ever. No, no. Wanda knows me down there. She asked me where I was going. I said, I'm going upstairs. Then she came and got us. No, I'll go sign. You want me to sign a piece of paper that I'm upstairs? I'll sign you when I leave. Right? Yeah. You get a little thing that says yeah. my name. Is. Hey, well, they won't give that. They call up here. Say, we're not taking appointments. I've been through that. I understand. You know, so... It, it's ridiculous, man. I'm trying to help. I know, and and I appreciate it. If, if yeah. I hope you know that I, I do. You you've been calm and and coming up with ideas, and, and I appreciate that. I mean, it all stems from back in September when a cop didn't do their job and put me and my family's life in danger, man. It all stems. That's where everything started. Yeah, I filed a complaint, went through IA, just got my findings back. Of course, no wrongdoing, so I'm in the appeal process. Yeah. You, you, can't just, you can't give a victim's home address out to the person who threatened them. You can't do that. That's what was done, but apparently it's no policy violation and it's not against the law, according to our geniuses over here in IA which I'm going to make a complaint about too because my sergeant in IA before the invest in the middle of the investigation told me he didn't even think this should have raised to a complaint or an investigation. This is a guy conducting the investigation. So his mind is made up. How much work went into that? It's, it's dirty from the top to the bottom, man. Everyone, the police department, internal affairs, the mayor's office, everybody in between, the city attorney. It's awful, awful, awful. We're going to expose it all. What's the uh, verdict there? We're willing to talk to you, but no, not on the record. <laughs> okay, so he's so he's not willing to talk to me then. I'm talking. This is the chief of staff. This ain't the mayor. Yeah. So he's not willing to talk to me then. Well, not if you report. Uh, what's he have to hide? I mean, this is what it boils down to. This is what I'm talking about. I'm okay with accepting a phone call. He doesn't want anyone to know what we're talking about and and and, and what he's gonna say. It's not okay. We need transparency and accountability. So. The answer is no, then. I need your name, please. Excuse me, I would like your name so I can place a complaint. So you, you, you work for the city. I guess I'm not leaving anytime soon. I got to get this guy's name. He won't give it to me, guys. Uh, Trying to get out of here. All right, well, you keep me here longer than I need to be. That's what I'm saying. From the top down, everyone, even security in this building, man, don't want to do their job. Well, let's take a picture of this sign again. It's required or you see that is there a way to obtain this security guard's name that you guys know of did you just ask him yeah he, he, he ignored me and walked away he didn't want to give it to you no All right. let no. me speak with him i appreciate that guys would either one of you guys give out personal information to someone who threatened to blow my building up no right yeah, I didn't think so. I appreciate that. Not every officer would do that. Got a security guard that doesn't want to identify. Mayor's locked in his office along with all of his staff. They don't want to uh, come out and speak to me. His chief of staff will only speak to me if it's not recorded a phone call or video. No transparency here in Bridgeport. No accountability here in Bridgeport. Goes from the police station to internal affairs to the city attorney's office to the mayor's office. Doing good today, Ms. Wanda? Yeah, I'm always doing good. Okay. Good. You know me, Hunter, No, it's from Yeah. Yep. Ooh. Did you 
Did you call her? I haven't called anybody. Check with the mayor. <laughs> yeah. well, thank you, though. Okay. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Hmm. So we don't have an issue with you. You, you want, obviously, just yeah. to force your way into the doors. You right, 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 right. So yeah. I'm Absolutely. not going to bother you. I'm gonna I appreciate go. that. Obviously, the building, I think, closed at 5 o'clock. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm on my way out. I just needed this gentleman's name. Yeah, I was trying to get yeah. it for you. Um, I mean... Policy, he works for the city. He's a public employee. He's got to give me his name. I need to file a complaint on him. So, there's, there's nobody at this Wanda just went upstairs. She, she, you know, I bet you if I watched the video back, she was calling for someone, and I think it was him. So I probably have his first name on video, but I'm not sure. Well, like I said, we don't have a problem with you. We're going to be over there. We're going to let you. Yeah, I appreciate you it, guys. I appreciate it. From, so. Thank you. And I'm not going to, there's going to be no issues in here. Just to no, I put know, your I mind know. at ease yeah. as well. I spoke with you before. I met you before. I think so. I think yeah, so. so. Yeah. yeah. It's still going on. It's a shame. Did the mayor ever reach to talk to you or no? No, he refuses to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here, man. You know? And you're sending an email. And there's every no single day. Every day. I sent an email last week, every day, even through the weekends. I know they're not there on weekends, but just to prove my point, no responses. It's, it's not okay, man. And when I, you guys have a great day, man. The security guard stood at the top of an escalator, blocking you from getting off and almost causing you to fall and get severely injured. And the cops were called on you. Yes. By who? By uh, either that security guard or the receptionist Wanda. The security guard's name is uh, Roger. Um, All right. I'm not sure which one called them, but they were called. All right. And we're almost up to date here, ladies and gentlemen. June 1st, a third visit to the mayor's office to talk with the mayor. He's not calling back. This is not some giant metropolis that it should take six months to get to the mayor. Sure, I can, man. I've already been through this, yeah. Y'all need to stop trying to prevent people from coming up here, man. You have to make an appointment. If you don't have an appointment, you can't come up. It's a public building? You don't I'm need an appointment go to come up here. With you. Well, that's fine. They told you the last time. And so. I came up the last time, and there was nothing they could do about it, right? Okay. So who's right, who's wrong? Let's try this other door. Come on, come look this way. I'm not going that way, man. Don't tell me where to go. These are all public hallways, man. You don't need an appointment to come up. Stop banging, please. I'm asking you nicely. No. Stop banging. No, I'm knocking on a door. No, you're tell, banging. Tell them to answer the door then. Go tell, tell them you. nicely. I can't, I can't so you can't tell me you. either. I can tell you stop banging. You can tell them to answer the door. What's up, fellas? No, I thought it was the birds. How y'all doing today? Good. What can I do for you? Oh, you guys can't do anything for me. I'm trying to get a meeting with the mayor still. So I told you I was going to come back as often as I can. First chance I had. Again, he wants to duck me. Have they emailed you at all? No, I've emailed every day, sometimes multiple times a day since the last time I was here. Twice haven't today. Called haven't called me, haven't emailed me, nothing. I wouldn't pop up if I just got a response. We've been through this, y'all know. Mm-hmm. You know, so I've reached out on social media too. Nothing. Nothing. So here we are. Let's try to get knock on this other door again. Such a fucking coward, man. I can see y'all behind your door. Then they're probably not going to come out. Right? I'm sure they won't. Did no one call you, sir? Nobody, no. I know you want an interview with the recording, but... At this point, absolutely. I know, but I don't think you're going to get that. Well, you know what? Give me a reason why. They won't even do that. Yeah. So... Oh, they have my email address. They have my phone number. Absolutely. 
They just don't. Hey, hey sir, how are you? I'm good. How's it going? Uh, well, I'd be a lot better if you left. Okay. Right. Everybody's asking you to leave. We need you to leave. What's this the is, reason? This is becoming an ongoing thing. Right now, you're trespassing because you were actually leaving. No. You're not, you're, this is a you're public building. I haven't broken a law. It's not trespassing in a public building. Okay, we're, we're not going to do this. We okay. are. All right, all right. Listen, you don't want to abide by the listen, law. Listen, you're you not going to be here causing a scene, though. I'm not causing a yes, scene. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You got called I'm... here for a reason, sir. What's the reason? Causing a disturbance. What's the disturbance? Please. What's the disturbance? Just What's gonna What's gonna make you happy, Mr. Williams? We've been through this. Man. I know. I need I need him to contact me. Okay. Who, oh, huh? Mayor. We can't do this every week, Mr. Williams. I told you I'm coming back as often as I can. Okay. This is the first chance I've had to come back. You're probably not gonna get an appointment by doing this. I I didn't get an appointment by not doing this. Right. At least, I'm making myself known now. I'm gonna have someone contact you. Who? And when? I'll find somebody. Okay. All right? Yeah, sure. It's not going to be today, though. Well, you let me know when and who? Yeah. All right. What's your phone number? I'll contact you. Right. Th th that's fine. That's fine. This presence and trespass and all that bullshit, you guys are out of line. No, no. Nah, nah. I mean, I this, this is I nonsense, man. Yeah. This, this guy did. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it because I'm not trespassing. Yeah, I haven't broken help. any law. Right. They're up. not going to help up. me. They're not going to help me. It's And I'm going to have somebody contact you. Here's the deal also. Go ahead. What is it? You don't need an appointment to come up here. Okay? I agree. I agree. Okay? I'm not going to get you an do, appointment you do, you do need to, hear me to, to go into these offices. You gotta, yeah. You got to show your ID. That's right. You got to get a little name tag. So that's what they want. And do. you got you to make sure they know you're coming. Not you, you can't do that you if, you know, if I want to come up and... And photograph this stuff, and while I'm here, yeah, no, try to get a meeting with the mayor. I can right. do that. But we don't want I don't need an appointment for that. We don't want to cause a disturbance. Yeah. You got to talk to that guy. I know, but he's not banging on the door. I'm, I'm simply knocking. I have the door unlocked. I mean, that's a public lobby, too. We've been through this, man. It's, it's, all, it's all public, man. I know. I, mean, no, I know you're I, upset. I, I'm beyond give me, upset. Give me a little bit of time, and I'll uh, see if I how, have someone contact you. Okay. How, long, how long do you want? couple days. Okay. Give me a couple days. That, that, that's fine. I'll, I'll have someone. For that's you. fine. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll give you a full week. Give me a full week. How's that? We'll make sure somebody contacts Okay. All right. Awesome. All right. You got okay. it. Thank you. I'll do my best. You got it. Because I, I will be back if, if, if we don't get this taken care of. Okay. And I'd brush up on the law if I was you, buddy. Trespassing. Disturbance. Really? Nonsense. Nonsense. It's not your fault. You, you, you know, you, you, don't, you don't work for that office. But enough's enough, man. I will take the arrest. 100%. It wouldn't be a lawful arrest. But I will, I will take... Well, those officers seem to think I'm trespassing, so. I, I appreciate that. You, you've, been, you've been very cordial. If I can't, and if I, can't I will call you either way. That, that's all I ask for. Just I ask for a little bit of time. Okay? I'll give you the full week. Yeah. That's Thursday. You, know? you got it. Right. Thank you very much, you man. It. You have a great day, man. Let's pause here a minute, because this is the video you're about to see. Yes. So you go there to the government center in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and you very wisely brought a friend of yours to also record. So you're going to record because you want to document your interactions to keep you safe. City of Bridgeport and Mayor Gannon, while we're here, hopefully he's in, and I can knock on the door and schedule a meeting to discuss my concerns as a small business owner who's been trying to get this meeting for months now lots of issues. Let's go see what's going on. We enter the building, the receptionist Wanda, who is the rudest person, how she's the first face you, you see when you walk in there is beyond me. Okay, well, you we can't do that. Yes, we can. I've been through this. We're going to do it. We're going to go upstairs, take some pictures, come back down. Okay, go upstairs. Look at this. 
Okay. You, oh, when you have a, Come on. Me. Look at sir. You can't go upstairs, young man. I've been you upstairs. Have, uh, I spoke with Tehran yesterday. And we cleared all this up. You can't prevent me from going upstairs. Okay. There's, there's no me. COVID Excuse restrictions. Me. Excuse me, Joe. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. You spoke to who? Tehran, the, okay. the head of security. Okay. And, and, and what did he tell you? We talked about going upstairs and how they, he can't prevent me from going okay. upstairs. Okay. He told you to come in and go upstairs? Yeah. Okay. Well, wait. Let me confirm that. You can confirm that. Oh, I am. Okay. I mean, there's, like no, there's no problem going upstairs. Yes, it is a problem going upstairs. Yes, it is. No, there's, there's and, no and you problem. Really to to what, what? For my safety, I'm doing a story now. Okay. Well, you, you guys have treated me Don't like say trash. you guys. The city like of Bridgeport is you. Uh, don't say you guys. The city okay, of Bridgeport. If I treat you like trap, you would know. Mm -hmm. Sharon. Like How about that attitude, huh? Like it's Yeah, because you know why? Because you come down. Excuse me, young man. You 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 can't go upstairs. Don't so. don't you put your hands on him. Excuse me. You think I don't, don't you think I, I'm not gonna you're touch real, him? You're real close, okay? You're real close. I'm just letting you know. Told Wanda that I had a conversation the day before with Teron Jones, who is the head of security for that building. There is a sign at the bottom of the escalators that say no or photo ID or visitor pass required beyond this point. My conversation with Teron. I learned in that conversation that was put in place for COVID. All COVID restrictions have been lifted here in Connecticut. Well, let me clarify. So they were requiring unconstitutionally, yeah. and, you know, have an appointment to surrender your fourth amendment right to enter a government building. Yeah. However, that was just into the building, not to go upstairs. Like once you pass that point, there was no sign that said you couldn't go upstairs, no, or downstairs, not at all, anywhere, not at all. All right. So then you proceeded to you want to do your business yep. and record yep. your yep. and document what was going on. You know, these public notices. How would you know about this if you can't come up here? Yeah. Yeah. Public facilities. Work their way around. We need to create a public document right there, Roger. I can yeah, request that. Just like you. No, I don't work for the public. Neither. I don't work for the public either. You work in a public building. You get paid by you, public you, funds. You're taking me. I'm taking you, brother. That's okay. That's don't right. don't delete that. That's all. Because it is a public record. If you delete it, it's a crime. Okay. I'm letting you know. I'm putting you on notice. If you delete it, I'm going to request that. Okay. Take note of the time. Can we pan over and get him filming me? Because it's now a public record. Perfect. That's the guy who almost made me take the spill down the escalator last time I was here. Quick question. Yeah. So today you're just uh, looking at some of the artwork. Yeah, I'm doing a story on the city of Bridgeport and the mayor. As I pass by his office, I am going to knock and see if I can get a meeting with them. I spoke to a couple people yesterday. Call? I spoke to a couple people yesterday. Okay. And uh, it wasn't treated very nicely, so I told them I would stop by today. Oh, okay. So, All right. I just left it at that. All right. So. Kind of gotta wait till they uh, reach back out to you. They don't. You know I mean? They don't reach back out to me. Right. When they do, they don't schedule that meeting on the phone. They hang up on me. All right. Did you sign in today? No, I didn't sign in. You gotta sign in. I don't have to sign in. Come to a public building. My name is Joe Burns. Yeah, but you gotta you know fill out the form. Let us you know form. That, that's why it's there. It's form in, in the front. There's no form here. No one. No one even asked me to sign in. Nobody asked you to sign no, in. Y'all know who I am. You don't have to sign in to come in. It's a public building. So you just, it's a Fourth Amendment violation, man. It is? You think so? Yeah, absolutely. I know so. Okay. I know so. It violates my Fourth Amendment. It, for, for, for them to ask you to sign no, in? No, to require you to sign in, not ask. I, I said, I, what did I, I can ask? politely I said, decline. You, I said, did you sign in? Yeah. I didn't even know there was something to sign, but I, I okay. politely decline. Oh, okay. You guys know who I am anyways. So, okay. I'm here. Joe's here. All right. So now the model over here.
Yeah, there's no more COVID restrictions. So you don't need an appointment to come up. Yeah, but it helps to, to see somebody if you have an appointment. That way you know that the person that you're looking for is actually here at that moment. I'll, I'll agree with you. You know what I mean? I'll agree with you. You, you, you kind of people, you, people you, you, you do kind of chance it. You. you do kind of chance to let you know if they're going to be in or not. Here, but then maybe they're not. You know what I mean? I mean? We're going out months and months, and nobody has contacted me to, to okay. set this up. So that's what I got to do now, you know? Okay. This is, uh, let's get a shot of this. Uh, man, I think Get me in here, man. This guy right here, the mayor. He's the uh, focal point of uh, the story. This is where, where he sits here. They, they, you won't get anyone to come out, though. Let's see if it's unlocked. Man. It was on, I was not in. See, what happens is they call up here from downstairs. So they all run in the back and act like they don't hear me knocking. That's the public service you get on these appointed officials. There's a city attorney is located there. I recently found out during that visit that there is a office upstairs, small and minority business resources. I never knew that was up there. If I didn't go up there, I would have never known. They have an office of small business affairs. Wow. This is a place that perhaps can help you. Yeah. So yes. do you think you had a right a to go up to that floor? I know I have a right to go up to that floor. Yeah, I was just uh, passing by on a small business and I wanted to see what type of resources you guys want. Okay, can I make Wait, you're under arrest. Under arrest? Yes, under arrest. Under arrest. For what? Under arrest. For what? For what? For what? We'll let you know. You're under arrest. We'll let you know. Like, yeah, we'll let you know. Trespassing. I've been told that you were not supposed to be here. I am supposed to be here. Well, I'm not trespassing from a public building without breaking the law. Well, when you've been told that you're not allowed to leave here, you can't be trespassed from a public building. That's your battle for We're done talking. I got bad. I got bad news. I need to go down the escalator. Okay, that's the last You're not doing that to me. You're not doing that. You guys are trash, you know? That's good, man. Like a turn. I appreciate it. I appreciate the thought. Like a turn. This yourself, you know, this was, you know, and it's your winning court, right? Which name? Oh, you're going to know my name. Which name? You will know my name. Yeah, you will know my name. I do for it also be on the And yourself? Trust that. I'm sorry? I'm going to Your badge number? 309. Okay. You guys have put it on board. No problem. I've been put on board before. I'm 23 years. Yeah? Still here. Yeah. Is that amazing? That's going to change. You think so? I, 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 yeah, I know. Good luck to you. Hey. Hey. Good luck to you. Detective Doors. Doors, all right, thank you. We got downstairs, we're walking out, and as you see in the video, there's two officers. One, I'm handcuffed behind my back. One of them has my right arm. The other officer is behind me. There's double doors. He pushes the door open, the left side door, and walks me through. Nobody held that door open, and it closes on my shoulder. My hands are behind my back. It closes on my shoulder. And I said, what the fuck? You know, and this uh, officer said, great acting job. It wasn't an acting job. I did seek medical attention uh, a couple days later. I went to the hospital. Nothing was dislocated or broken. I just had a bruise on it. Congratulations on your acting. You need better acting than
Well, pause there a minute. The Once you're under arrest, they are legally responsible for keeping you safe. And that's another example of here's another we can like dig it. You know, here's something else. We can do something else to get at Joe. Again, this this is sadistic. This isn't professional. This isn't, you know, people who are protecting and serving. And it doesn't end there. So they should have held the door open for you, especially you've talked with them about some physical limitations you have. And whether they like you or not, professional means they act as a professional and will do the right thing and and act as a, one human being acting civilly to another human being would do. Uh, they're going to call it trespassing. And if so, that he wasn't allowed to uh, be on a property. I mean, I'm just I don't, I'm, I'm baffled myself. The back of the Bridgeport police uh, cruisers, there, there's no room back there. Uh, I couldn't get in and sit normally in the seat uh, because of my back and my leg. So I had to scoot in and basically lay across the back seat or sit across the back seat. And I asked them to find a way to buckle me in, which he refused to do. Now, I don't know if everyone's seen what happened in New Haven with Randy Cox. Yes. I felt unsafe back there. And by the way, what happened to Randy Cox? Randy Cox was unbuckled in the back of a police van, correct? Right, right. In the back of one of those for life, paddy wagon vans and is paralyzed now, I believe. Right, for life. And yeah. It was a huge settlement. Awful. Just just recently, yeah. Right. But Awful. unfortunately, the police officers don't pay a penny of that. I That's know. Why, ladies and gentlemen, when you say, hey, you know, if you do this or that, police officer, I'm going to sue you. That's like saying blah, blah, blah. They, yeah, don't, they don't care. care. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you know about New Haven. And yes. you know as a person in a vehicle, you need to be seat belted. In fact, it is law. a law. And this cop, again, egregiously refusing to keep you safe. This is being unsafe part two. So continuing. And so what happened after that? I uh, I get to uh, the police station. We get to booking. And you were not seat belted. You were not buckled in. You were not secured at all. Nor were right my now. Miranda rights ever read to me. So no Miranda rights read. And by the way, did he drive slow? He drove slow enough. Yeah, he wasn't all over the place. Uh, you know, but I, I still didn't feel safe in that car no. without the belt. No, no, no. Whether he drove slow or not, I'm just curious if he actually did drive slowly, yeah. thinking that actually makes you safer when a drunk driver does a head-on collision. Oh, yeah. he was driving slowly. The drunk driver's doing 90. But, right. you know, he was okay because he drove slow. Yeah. So I, I get the booking, and uh, they, I have to the, – the cells in there are dirty as hell. I had to go in there with no shoes on because – my laces don't come out. They want to cut them. I'm in this horrible, dirty cell with just socks and probably for about three hours, three to three, three and a half hours, I think, and uh, got bonded out. And here we are now. All right. Well, stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. The You've heard about the incredibly inhumane, unprofessional treatment that was given to Joe Burns, an upstanding members, community, small business owner. We at Leroy Truth Investigations will keep you up to date. And I want to thank Scalzo Photo for all of his help as well. And some of the questions that were asked in this interview, as well as some of the editing that was done here. So appreciate him. Make sure to check out Scalzo Photo's channel and subscribe to him. And Joe, again, I'm not going to wish you the best. I'm going to support you so that you get the best and you know, our subscribers, our supporters, we're all behind you. And we'll keep you up to date, ladies and gentlemen, as to what unfolds. Thank you very much, Leroy. It's so appreciated. I hope you know that. My pleasure.